ready? S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! I have sweaty hands, Steve. You do? When you hold my hand, I constantly have sweat. Yeah. And, yeah. Especially in the morning. As a sweaty guy, I find my temperature doesn't even out until the afternoon. You're, I don't know why. You're just... You're precarious. Steve and I were holding hands to start the episode because we do that from time to time. What's that? What's that beef dish that's cooked inside a pastry? A beef Wellington. Yes. You're a beef Wellington. No, thank you. You're just you're so difficult to get your temperature. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. You yes. Know? Yes. And if you don't get it right, Gordon Ramsay comes and yells at you. He and, does. And you that's, donkey. <laughs> um, hey, wear so, a helmet. Surprisingly, a lot of a lot of stuff in the last couple of days hockey related, which I'm kind of excited by. And I, and I want to start with. Quentin Byfield and a big extension. And I, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm oh. starting with this oh. because it does affect the Leafs. Um, and, and Steve, I don't know if you saw his reaction. You could hear his reaction. When you see the Quentin Byfield contract, he shakes his head and he goes, ah, uh, why do you shake your heads? And you go, ah, uh, when Quentin Byfield gets $31.25 million. What, dude. When that extension was first sent to the CJ show, I think it was the CJ show group chat. I was like, I want to start a fist fight. I've, I've never seen a contract extension for another team so good that it made me like, I just, I just want to start a fight. Now I let me, I want to Russell Crowe this. Now I know how you guys feel about Quentin around Byfield world. and I feel the same, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be internet guy for a second. No, that's fair. But Quentin Byfield only is, you know, his career high in points is 55. Dude, it's, it's a, it's a totally fair point. Like, it is a very legitimate. He, up until this season, his career high in goals was five. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. And he had three the previous year. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, and I think with him, we know like that's that's been the argument for so many contracts that have actually gone quite well. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, Kaprizov, Carol Kaprizov, for some reason, forgot his first name. It's July. Uh, Jack Hughes, um, Quinn Hughes. Ma- oh man, this this wave of defensemen making nine million plus. Will they live up to it? Remember, it was like all signed within a week or Adam something. Fox, Adam Fox, uh, Kale McCarr, and Charlie McAvoy. Kale <laughs> McCarr makes nine million, and it might be the best contract in the league. Like mm-hmm. it's it's up there. It's got to be top ten. Yep, he should be making forty. And I think the fact that that he is, um. Kale McCarr is so good, it's hiding the fact that Adam Fox is a generational defenseman as well. Yes. Like, he's so... We're lucky, man. I, I always used to do this for hat picks and dang it's Yes, we're talking about it. Relax. Relax. Stop DMing me about it. All right? But um, uh, for as much as I give the NHL crap um, for certain things, like, what a golden age of talent. Like... Yeah. Like, the, the way... The way certain people, the way Ken Reed looks at the 80s, he can't shut up about the 80s. He is the sports version of Family Guy. Yeah. He can't. Um, and it's because it was a great time to be a hockey fan. This is an unreal time to watch hockey. Unreal time. The amount of talent um, that is out there. And Quentin Byfield's part of that next wave. And to, to lock him up to friggin'. Wait, how long is the deal? Six years. Get out of my face! Jesse? I thought it was five. It's Jesse. five years. Oh, oh it's, it's five, five years. Sorry. Yeah. What's your initial oh. reaction? What was your initial reaction? No, it's a really good deal. It's a deal that we rarely see in the NHL because it's not a bridge deal in the sense that it's a two to three year deal where they just go to the next RFA contract. They are doing a five year bridge where they're walking him to free agency at the age of 26. I know one is- guy we've seen it with. Austin Matthews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's the Austin Matthews deal if Austin Matthews was a late bloomer and gave his team a discount. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's different than the Austin Matthews. Like when uh, when did Austin sign out, out of his ELC? Uh, he signed midway through his sec- his third year. Yeah. So he signed he was going to be a restricted free agent 6 months later essentially. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, the point sorry, I was making sorry. about sorry, you have, field, I was just saying that, that uh, it's it's a it's a deal we rarely see in the NHL because they're walking him to free agency, but because they are doing that compromise where they're not getting that full eight years or they're doing a mid tier two to three bridge, that's why you get this sweet discount on somebody who's twenty one years old has only scored the not that many goals in the NHL level, but is projected to be a first liner who can put up ninety points in a season. Like that's why it's. it's 
such a great discount. He he doesn't he's not at the money yet. But he's projected to way surpass the money. So by the end of it, and probably midway through, it's going to look like a fantastic contract. We, it's we, a great deal for the Kings. We've talked about this a few times. Like I, I believe that was the 2020 draft um, where it was Lafreniere and Byfield. And a, a lot of guys in that draft class, their development got screwed up a bit. Mm -hmm. And with both guys, we were like, hey, are they going to show up? And every now and then you see like a little flash of it and you're like, no, not yet. No, not yet. And there was a moment last year where, with Byfield where you're like, there he is. And for some reason, just because of his talent, we're like, that's going to be him from now on. Lafreniere didn't get that rub, I would say, until the playoffs where everyone was like, oh, OK, holy moly. <laughs> Even though he had a great start. like he was Yeah, he had, a, he had a good season, but it was, again, the the... The mantle of the first overall pick. Can I can I ask a difficult one? So so one of the things that used to happen in hockey that was very different from say football or basketball was guys would walk out of college or sometimes out of high school in the NBA's case mm -hmm. and walk onto the court and be amazing mm -hmm. in in the NBA. Uh, uh, high school less so, but it did happen. Um, in hockey, it was years and years and years. I remember a guy like Jason Spezza. Look at the beginning of Jason Spezza's career with the Senators. He had um he was sent down two years in a row by Jacques Martin really and then finally was allowed and I'm, I'm just pulling up his stats his first season with the Senators 33 games seven goals 14 assists and that's two years after his draft year. you know what in the heart of the dead puck era for a rookie not bad that's pretty but good that's, that's when he was 20 yeah and he was a uh second overall pick Yes, he was. And then his next year, 22 goals, 33 assists, 55 points. And then the next year after that, 05, 06, that's when he really broke out. I think they made the finals that year. Uh, or was that the uh, next year? Seven. Yeah, 07. So, so and then and and a guy like Joe Thornton, whatever. So it's not, I think because we had um we had Austin Matthews, we had Connor McDavid, we had Jack Eichel, we had all these guys at the top in the mid 2010s. We had a ridiculous run that came in and were spectacular point to game players right away. Right. Go, go further back. Taves, Kane. Were they great in the first year? Like, uh, I'm talking about great. Like, I don't remember. So, my, my point in <laughs> my point with Lafreniere and with um, Quentin Byfield, and I think this is something that people need to look out for with Slavkovsky, is in hockey, it does normally take a couple years. Oh, yeah. It's just we. We've been spoiled the last decade. Yes, we have. Now, wait a sec. Jesse's burying the lead. Did, did you see the huge headline mm -hmm. that <clears throat> after signing the five-year extension out of his ELC, Quentin, one of Quentin Byfield's teammates' agents did a huge interview talking about how bad the contract is? No, no? I didn't see that. Oh, that's no. because it didn't happen because that's a psychotic thing to do. Okay. What are you referencing? Darren Ferris. You suck. Stop it. Stop. Um, Ooh, uh, now, I wanted to relate this to an interview that Kyle Dubas conducted recently. Speaking and I thought of, this is interesting. Oh. Craig Custance did an interview and uh, Craig Custance of The Athletic, that is. And Kyle Dubas said this, and I think this is a really important way to view this. Uh, he said his biggest uh, mistake as Leafs GM, the biggest mistake I think I made in my whole time uh, was not taking care of three incumbent contracts. William Nealander was up. Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews could have been done on July 1st extensions. The thing I learned was once we signed John to that AAV, we lifted the lid on the entire ceiling. And you look at what's happened in Vancouver with Quinn Hughes. You look at New Jersey with Jack Hughes. You look at Montreal with Nick Suzuki. Mm -hmm. And these guys who are younger guys who are the, the, the future of their teams and no one's making above what they're making and they're making eight or nine. Now, and and I look at the L.A. Kings and I think, first off, my instant reaction was, wow, the Kings finally did a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I know. It's been yeah, a while. It's been a tough run for them. Um, the second thing is, I think that if you look at the Leafs core and the way that the league has reacted since that those signings and the pandemic with the flat cap, all of them have pivoted to what the Senators did last year with Jake Sanderson. And, oh, yeah. and, and they're taking bets, and even the Leafs are doing it, taking bets on younger players so that the the top end stuff doesn't happen because they realized that structuring a team the way the Leafs have doesn't work. Literally and reasonably, all teams looked at the situation the Leafs are in and they went, oh, we don't want to do that. And they are better. But it's, isn't it interesting, so. though, that previous to that, 
when guys were signed to contracts like this, teams were made fun of because what what people used to say was, well, those guys haven't earned it. They haven't. You're giving it. them a bunch of money. They haven't earned it yet. They should have to earn it. That was the prevailing thought. I mean, if there's sure bets out there, make the sure bet. Um, McAvoy, McCarr, Fox. You're not screwing those up. <laughs> yeah. You're not. You're not screwing. Quentin Byfield. Up. I think pretty good. Bet. I don't think you're screwing up Quentin Byfield. Um, you know, uh, I, I mean, to a way, way lesser extent, way, way, way lesser extent. Um, Dubas with the uh, Joseph Wool contract that he's currently on. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know what? Three year contract under 800 grand. I remember at the time being like, he's barely played. What? Another one was Logan Thompson. Yep. With the Vegas Golden Knights, almost identical. Might be literally identical. Like those, those are the ones on a far smaller uh, scale. Um, I'll be honest. I hate having to do this every time we talk about. The but it is the story, right? It's yeah. This is like, I think people think um, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to push an agenda here and I'm not trying to be bitter about it. Um, it affects every single decision the team makes this current cap structure. You have to bring it up every time. So let me ask, let me ask the general manager in the room because we need some general manager oh, stage goodness. advice. Mm -hmm. Matthew Nyes is in year going into year three of his, of his ELC, Jesse. He had okay. 35 points last year in 80 games, but a real great playoff performance. Again, that's two years in a row. Do you try to lock up Matthew Nyes, who is eligible for an extension right now? Yeah, that should be the idea, right? You get Matthew Nyes on the a similar contract where it's five or six years, six years, six or seven, ideally, if for as much as you can. You just assume that he's going to grow into it and surpass the contract that you're going to give him now. And the overarching thing that's on every contract that's signed these days is that the salary cap's going up. Like in. Yep. In the next four or five years, it's going to be a hundred million dollar salary cap. It's going to be very difficult to sign a bad Matthew Nyes deal as long as you don't give him a giant contract like uh, like the Marner and Matthews ones that they gave them initially. And Matthews, like that's a fair contract, even though it was uh, yeah. like a way above market value. He lived up to it because he's Austin Matthews. Matthew Nyes probably not going to live up to an eleven million dollar contract, <laughs> but as long as it's reasonable in AAV and term, like it's hard to sign a bad Matthew Nyes deal so you do it and you do a long extension let me ask you this okay so sure. and i'm gonna ask you this is for both of you so matthew nyes is a year older than quentin byfield mm -hmm. didn't come in and with the same um fan you know fair. yeah fanfare because quentin byfield was a second yeah. yeah yeah there's so, a bit of a difference but you know both play very physical games mm -hmm. matthew nyes had 10 points less than quentin byfield last year um and as as I said, he's a year older. Does not play center. Does not play center. Neither well, Quentin Byfield technically listed as a wow. winger right now, but can play center. Yeah. Um, what do you think a deal like that looks like? If you were to just it's July talk, right? So we're, we're and they're actually the same age. They're both two thousand two babies. Oh, they are. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but they're different year draft picks. But they're both two thousand two babies. Oh, so they're apart by like a few months. One months. August. One's October. There you oh, go. Oh, come on. Yeah. I know. Oh, well, they got to make a cutoff. Um. <laughs> I don't sign for a dollar less than the Michael Bunting contract that he got in Carolina. Four and a half. Um, Is that what he got? I want to say it was four and a half times three, or okay. was it three and a half times four? Um, uh, I think the Leafs should a hundred percent try to extend him. Um, four and a half times three. Four and a half times three. If I'm him, I don't sign for a dollar less than that. What if it's over seven years and you're giving up his UFA? Matt Nyes' UFA doesn't start till 2030. This is the thing. Like you, so you sign a six year deal now. You walk him to free agency. If I'm him, I don't sign anything that isn't at least five years long. Um, because again, there's there's incentive for the Leafs to do this early. There's not for him unless you make it worth his while. And I say that because who's on the Leafs' left wing? There's nobody. It's, and I don't know what they have in terms of depth in the system, but I don't think it's that thick. <laughs> Nyes, McMahon, and a bunch of fart noises. And it, like, it, unless you, oh, okay, Pontus Holmberg's a full time winger now? Well, mm -hmm. no, he's not. Because even Easton Cowan's a right winger. Yeah, dude. Uh, well, and like, I'm sure he could play left and it wouldn't be that big a deal. But, and also, Easton Cowan has not played an NHL game in his entire life. 
mm-hmm. um, and may not this year. I think he will, but he may not. Um, I think, like, listen, as this is anti-Leaf fan right now. This goes against everything that I want. But if I'm Matthew Nye's agent, um, you know, he's made some money in his career so far. So what I do is I, I take him to Home Depot. And I buy one of those, you know, those little flamethrowers that they have, those little ones. Yeah, the like little torches. Yeah. yeah, to get rid of weeds. Yeah, I buy one of those to burn every offer the Leafs give me. <laughs> you have no left wingers. Uh, I'm heading into a contract year and I'm your top left winger. Give me six million per year. Okay, well, you got 35 points yet last year. I'm not doing that. All right, well, <laughs> and I set it on fire. I, you're signing me now because I might fuck around and play this full season on the top line and light it up. Mm-hmm. Give me at minimum five years. I would say at four. Well, if I'm him. So so then my question to you guys is, is we're going to have to we've been stuck in the same cap era for half a decade. And so everybody kind of got used to what a $3 million player look like, what a $6 million player look like, you know, yeah. it's not good. That is going to stretch. Jesse said it perfectly. It's really hard to sign a bad contract, really hard. And so what does, let's say he improves by 10 points this year, which is a big jump for anybody. 45. So he's up to 44, 45 points a year. What is a, what is, how much does 45 points cost you in, in this, in this 87.5, but it's actually not 87.5. It's probably $93 million world because Play- the extension doesn't kick in until after next season. Playoff performance matters and what you bring beyond the 45 points matters. So if he continues to be a guy who takes too many penalties and he does, and he continues to be a bit of a defensive liability, which he kind of is. I, I like, I think he'll outgrow both of those things. Um, you need to at least take strides in that direction. I still, I still think, yeah, I'm asking for at least $20 million if I'm him. Jesse, what do you think? I think we have a bar here with Byfield. It's, it's very convenient that this was signed in the last few days when we have this conversation because that, I don't think Nice can make over $6 million. I think he's not a second overall pick. He hasn't proved what Byfield has in this league. So I don't think $6 million is, is in the realm of possibility. But anywhere at 5.5 or 5, especially if you get him to year 7, um, and then you clean up some of the UFA deal, uh, UFA years that, like you said, it's starting in 2030. I feel like that's you. That's reasonable, right? It's it's you're right. Like if, if I mean, they could team, go eight. They could go eight. Oh yeah, they could. If if you're a team, I don't think he would. Mm-hmm. I know there's no reason. No, if you're a team, because then you're buying UFA years. Yeah, you're buying your own years. years. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't really make sense. If if you're a team that has a like a really good um, young player coming off their ELC. That Byfield deal is great news. Mm -hmm. That's super reasonable. Like, okay, so when do you become, when do your UFA years start? 26 or 27? 26. Yeah. 26. Uh, If I'm nice, I want five years. All right. So, yeah. There's the bar. So, the Byfield deal walks him right to age 26, 2029, and he's a UFA. Mm -hmm. That's why it's scary for the Kings. But you take that compromise for having Byfield at 6.25 for all of those years. You're like, who cares about that 2029 right now? That was the Matthews worrying it didn't. Yeah. No, who cares? And it's Matthews. I know it's different. So, you you have that kind of thinking where it's you walk into free agency and all that, and there's a big deal at the end, but you don't care about all those years in between because you have to win now, especially with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, you give him that that deal and you quote walk him to free agency but then when that time comes around you sign the next deal and it'll be fine because he either earned all of the money you're about to pay him or he didn't earn it and you move on so it's kind of a win-win since john Tavares with the islanders how many times has a team lost a player because they walked and they had the money to keep him you know what i mean like the leafs lost zach hyman and you know, a bunch of different guys because they're stubborn in their stupid cap structure, but they, there was no realistic path to them keeping him. None. Mm-hmm. Right. So like in like Stamkos is going to Nashville. Wow. Tampa didn't really fight hard to keep him. They didn't care to keep him. Vegas with March or so. Uh, you know what I mean? We've seen Vegas work hard to keep their guys. They didn't see him as one of their guys going forward, which is crazy because he just scored 40 goals. But 
That's how they felt. Mm -hmm. Um, like it's a worry. It's possible. It just hasn't happened very many times recently. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you get a decent, you, you get a reasonable answer out of a player. Yeah. I'm not staying. Then you have some room. You have some time to trade them. Yeah. You see guys who we are talking about losing guys for, for nothing. That rarely happens with the young players. You know, yeah. it's, it's, we're going to trade you or we'll resign you. And that's kind of the options. You don't usually walk them to free agency unless it's Johnny Goudreau, uh, and then he just goes to Columbus. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it's. Johnny. But even even then, he was like, it wasn't like he was coming off as ELC. You know, he no, spent yeah, so no, many yeah, years in right. Calgary. So even that situation doesn't really count. But like there, there should have been some foresight to where they couldn't sign him at the last minute. And Trilliving should have moved on, all that stuff, and you I, relitigate that. I think I think it was Mike Gold that tweeted out this week that he's like, you'd be hard pressed to find a team in the league with less forward depth than the Calgary Flames right now. He's like, even San Jose, it's probably better with Celebrini and Will Smith. Jesus, really? And, and, well, I don't know. I it was the last time oh, you wow. looked at, at the Flames forward depth. It's not great. But do you think it had to do with them trading they, everyone? Had they had a plan and had they kept Johnny mm -hmm. and probably not hired Daryl Sutter too, um, you know, had they had a real true plan, uh, they'd probably still be competitive right now. And it goes to show what not being planned out, not what not having that sort of foresight can do because one mistake mm -hmm. leads you to make three more that you because trying to fix the first mistake. Right. And you look at I look at the Pittsburgh Penguins and I know I've been really hard on them. Uh, I think the Wes Clark signing was a good one, you know, but I uh, but he's he's going to take it's going to take four to five years for Wes Clark's effect to be felt. The, I look the at the Pittsburgh, trade wasn't awesome, but getting bunting in this it's a fantastic really trade. good, but. They're still recovering from last year's free agency, mm -hmm. and they're still recovering from Ron Hextall and Brian Burke and the damage that that organ that did. Right? Mm -hmm. that was, you know, there there's a lot of. Um, it's the flying pig from The Simpsons. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's still good. It's still good. And things yeah. just keep happening. It's, I it's think, just a little airborne. I think with the no bad contracts thing with the salary cap going up, there's an asterisk on it, and that you can give a guy who's in his early 30s too many years and too much money, and that can be a bad contract yeah. in any situation. I think with young guys, it's impossible because the salary cap goes up, and if they live up to it, then it's a good contract, or you can trade them. But those free agents deals or those resignings for 30 year olds or 32 year olds, 33 year olds, and giving them all of these years and all of these dollars, those can end up aging very poorly yes. under any salary cap. Yes. So there are still what bad What do the contracts. Leafs just do? <laughs> yeah. No, you look like that could end up being a bust. The, yeah. The, yeah. the D men you bring in Tanev and like that could be a bust. Yes, I agree. You cannot give a bad contract to someone in their early 20s. You can't I'm going to pretend to not see Pierre-Luc Dubois. No, I'm but hey, here's what's interesting no. about Pierre-Luc Dubois. I was going to bring him up. I think You're able to get fine. out of it. PLD think, has been traded twice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like, crazy. Eh? That's that's reasonable. Like <laughs> You're able to get out of that deal, though. Teams can move on from him. The Caps, the Caps, uh, the Caps wanted him. No, three times. Columbus to, to Winnipeg. Oh, yeah. The, the first. I'm talking about since he sucked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, Depends on when you think he sucks. Hey, guys, have you heard of Saley? No, it's no. a new eSIM service app brought to you by Nord Security. Oh, Sealy, I've heard of that. Yes. Okay. Have you, you just said just, no. Just, no, just now. No. <laughs> From Adam. <laughs> if you've ever been lost abroad or badly needed an internet connection with no Wi-Fi spot in sight, you'll understand what a difference a local SIM card can make. And eSIM provides an internet connection wherever you travel. It saves you money on roaming fees. We told you uh, uh, our producer Maddie's all around Europe. She could use one of these. NordVPN. Did you not give her this? I didn't give her this before but she left. You didn't send her? I, I, you know you what? You didn't send her with Saley? I didn't know Saley that well at that point. Oh I felt like it was my unfair God, to ask Adam. that of Saley right oh. off the bat. But anyway, NordVPN. Now we can't talk to Maddie. She might be lost. <laughs> So you, middle of Italy somewhere. Here's what you do. Not you download Italy. it once. Not Italy. Uh, with Saley, an eSIM can be installed only once, eliminating the need for users to install a new eSIM in every country. And again, when you're traveling through like Europe, where countries are small yeah. and you're a, It'd be a, crazy if you knew somebody who needed this exact product right now. Exact. It's fun. Isn't that funny? Isn't that crazy, and then, Adam? And, and you didn't help thing. out because you're a bad friend. By not telling Maddie about Saley. Um, she might be open to things like scammers with fake SIM cards who sell them outside of train stations and airports all around. 
So now I just feel like we should contact her as soon as possible. But how could we possibly? We can't. We might not have her seven. <laughs> we can't. Also, you can minimize your roaming fees too, because obviously it costs an arm and a leg, especially if you're Canadian uh, and you're traveling in a different country. It's outrageous. Uh, you could significantly reduce those and even eliminate roaming fees. Twenty four seven support, chat support available twenty four seven. Compatible with iOS and Android devices. All you have to do is buy a plan, multiple plans in over one hundred and fifty countries with the best rates on. Online, go to Saily, S A I L Y dot com slash dangle, S A I L Y dot com slash dangle, and use the code dangle to Maddie. get an exclusive oh. 50%, excuse me, 15% off your first purchase. Again, it's dangle at S A I L Y dot com, Saily slash dangle. Use the code dangle, 15% off your first purchase. Brought to you by our friends at NordVPN. Um, I, I, I found this uh, clip of um, Bill Zito and it's it's uh, Jesse, I send it through to the, the messaging here. Uh, Bill Zito approaching trades in the offseason. And I think this is relevant to if you've got a team and the least, you know, there's been a lot of chatter, obviously, about Mitch Marner in Toronto and how long that's going to last and what return they're hoping for in a trade. And. You know, I think when you're putting your mock trades together, you shouldn't think value for value nece necessarily uh. because a cap space worth a lot of uh, a lot. I mean, look at let me put this in perspective for you. Patrick Marlowe's salary mm -hmm. to the Carolina Hurricanes half a decade ago was worth the first round pick, which is now first liner Seth Jarvis. Mm -hmm. So Patrick Marlowe's contract five and a half, six million bucks was worth a first round pick half a decade ago. Imagine what it's worth now. So my point is, um, Bill Zito makes a really good point about trading mm -hmm. in the NHL and how sometimes it's going to look like you got fleeced, but you might want to do it anyway. Uh, and I'm not suggesting we give people, we, we give great talents away, but I just thought this was really interesting from the guy with laser eyeballs. <laughs> with the salary cap right now, and then the supply and the demand of the players, it, it's almost a secondary thing. It's, it's just trying to fit the square into the square hole. And you can have a more valuable triangle, but you need a square. <laughs> and and it's uh, I tell a story about trades where it's not always about the trade, but it's about the result. So you may have a situation where you you're in the city and you have a ski chalet in the mountains, and your dream is to have your your seven best friends come for a ski weekend, and they show up, and it's awesome. It's Thursday night, you're going up to ski Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you have four Maseratis, two, two guys in each car, and you're going, in, and a blizzard comes. That's it. Your dream you can't go. You can't drive in the snow. I don't know that for sure, right? They're, ra they're race car Maseratis that you can't drive in the snow. Um, and the neighbor says, you know, I got four SUVs. You want to trade? Absolutely. And you lost the trade. You got killed on the trade, right? But you had your weekend. And so that's that's almost where we are now with regard to uh, personnel acquisitions trades. It's like you're trying to to put the puzzle together. So I just think that's a really interesting, open general manager conversation about trading in the NHL. I'm sorry. Can you imagine him ordering coffee? I like uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I like a regular coffee. Yeah, I just I don't know why I turned him into even sugar. Half Macho Man Randy I love Savage, but. I like, like imagine Bill just Zito. meeting that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you like dead silent, but it visually he's grunting. Look at him. You know what I mean? Look, oh, we just had him up. Here, oh, did we? There oh, it is. oh, my <laughs> fucking God. <laughs> what did you, he guys, looked at the Stanley Cup and that's why they won it. I watched this and didn't <laughs> send it to our group chat because I wanted to get your reactions on the show. What do you guys think of that? <sighs> I, well, I don't know the value of a Maserati. <laughs> I Listen, they're he, great until you drive them off the lot, apparently. <laughs> Isn't that what I've been saying for months? Isn't that what I've been saying for months with Bob Ogden and the Leafs? Isn't that what I've been saying for months? No, but how are you going to? You're not going to. It's the result rather than the deal itself, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. No, no. Okay. I thought that was an interesting distinction. And I don't know that it's necessarily right. I just wanted to know what your, your reactions were. Bob Ogden is a Maserati. Mm -hmm. He's a Maserati. Vroom, vroom. Fast as fuck. Super fun. Everyone loves looking at it. Then the winter comes and you can't drive it. Except the winter is the spring and the playoffs. Jesse? <laughs> I'll always have a bit of reverence for Bill Zito because 
you go back to the Huberto for Kachuk deal. Oh, like growing up, oh. for like well, not growing up really, but like in the through the mid early mid 2010s, uh, all you think about the Florida Panthers is Barkov and Huberto. You know they have they have two guys, and yeah. before that's Luongo and all that stuff. But those two guys were the franchise, and that that was it. And then they're they're good. They win the President's Trophy, and then they lose, and they're not good enough in the playoffs. And this guy went out there and was like, you know what? Huberto's due for an extension. We're not good enough. I'm going to make this giant earth shattering deal for a guy who is literally one of the two faces of the franchise. Top scoring single season for a left winger ever. Ever. Luke Robitaille, bum. <laughs> it, John Johnny Huberto. And he, he traded him and his like second best defenseman. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And he, I, he, at people because of rev like revisionism that deal at the time did not look great no not at all you like you you look at what calgary was doing at the time and there's so much praise being um uh, like put on brad Tra living because of the situation he was able to get out of it was a tough situation where he had a player who didn't want to be there and we're all just like wow look what you did there brad but we all should have been looking at the other side and in the moment bill zito his assessment of trades right right here in in the future like that's what we should have been thinking about then when he made that deal it's like okay in the end let's see the result of this and you got to look back on this as one of the most impressive trades in nhl history because of what happened like four weeks ago when the florida panthers raised the stanley cup with matthew kachuk he was willing to make that move with a franchise player just take a chance because he has assessed the team that they had there and he knew it wasn't good enough and it needed a giant shakeup and he was willing to do that deal. So I don't know, just looking at what Bill Zito does in the NHL, I think everybody can learn from he, that. No, he no, gave I, up. He gave up the top scoring left winger ever single season yeah. and a right shot defenseman in your top four. Who can Mc play both sides. Mackenzie Weger yeah. is a freaking stud. Mm -hmm. He had 52 points last year. Mackenzie Weger had 20 goals last year. He'll beat the brakes off you. He'll hit you. He's amazing. You can play the wheels off him. And, and look at that. Yeah, and the results were of it were for Bill Zito to raise Stanley Cup. Which no, was... no, no, no. You know what would have been better? Is... <laughs> no, no. Stop, Bob stop. Ogden. Yeah. I, know, I didn't say Bob Ogden. <laughs> what is it? What you is what? it? Waiting for it. Sorry, Jesse put some words in my mouth. Let <laughs> <laughs> me just get, get those out of here. Yeah, no, take them out. Take your own words. No, no. It's what if. Yeah. Like, I have, I have a way to make Bill Zito's scenario even better. What if. They just stayed stranded at the chalet and listened to songs on the radio in their Maserati. And had chill Maseratis. Yeah. Yeah. And just had <laughs> chill Maseratis and went nowhere. <laughs> and they just stayed there. Did you notice he said four? <laughs> Stop. What? <laughs> Stop. What? <laughs> what? Um, no, what if you just went nowhere and did nothing? Couple of couple uh, of just of note too. There was also a first round pick that went in the deal to Calgary. Yeah. Like <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I straight up I, did I not forgot know that, that too. I just googled the trade and there was a first round pick in So it. what is the trade? Who, what is it the was trade? uh the trade was Kachuk was traded to the Florida Panthers on Friday with Huberto part of the hall going to the Calgary Flames for the power forward. Florida also sent defenseman Mackenzie Weger, prospect Cole Sch Schwint. Yeah, Schwint. Schwint. Schwint and a lottery protected first round selection in the 2025 NHL draft. Oh no. So the the selection hasn't even happened yet. Wait a sec. Is that 2025 pick the one they sent to Montreal in the Monahan trade? Oh, it might be. Oh. Yeah, I haven't, oh. I haven't gone that far, but I oh. that's rough. I am not sure. I'm not. Rough. Oh. <laughs> that's rough. It was this was the first time. This what? was the first time. I almost said go check cap friendly. No, you can't. Puckpedia, my friend. Um, Check Puckpedia. Uh, the, the, the article underneath the trade article, that's like the AP one of just, hey, here's the trade, is an article by Greg Wyshynski from two years ago. Why the Flames ace the Kachuk Huberto swap. Everybody but thought that's they That's how had. we were all thinking at the time. Everybody thought the they evidence. Had. They had a guy who didn't want to be there and no leverage. And, and you got like, Jonathan Huberto. You signed Nazem Kadri. It's like, wow, summer of Brad. I think summer, they had the wrong summer, head coach. I will always maintain summer that. Of Brad. Because he went from losing, uh, it was Goudreau. Goudreau Kachuk. walked, yeah. and that was a disaster. And uh, then I want to say it was like, oh, yeah, and they have to trade Kachuk. Mm -hmm. And they turned that into, oh, we got Kadri and Uyghur and, and Huberto. Huberto. A lot of people thought they were going to be good. Summer of Brad. I also, also want to say that, that 
you know, I know a lot of people blame Brad for living and they should for what happened. Like a lot of Calgarians are like, Brad, 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 Brad. And I get it. We're a little like that with Dubas, except for the fact that we're a little bit more open about the fact that our, our president is still here. Flames fans, I never see them. The one guy that is always omnipresent with the Flames, but never mentioned in the news, who has made all of these decisions, hiring the head coach, mm -hmm. hiring the general manager, hiring spitefully never dealing with the Leafs, Don Maloney. He's I don't know. I don't know. What is his guy. title? He is the president oh. of the Flames, and he's the guy that that hired all these people. So whether or not Brad had had you know, car blanche or whatever. I know that Brad did not hire Sutter and that Don Maloney did. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Brad did not want Sutter. Sutter did not want Brad. They were forced into an unhappy marriage by Don Maloney. That to me is the start of the downfall. And I'm really surprised that guy just skates every time there's any sort of criticism. And by the way, the Flames didn't really know for six months of the last year, like from 23 in the summer till maybe January this year, didn't really know what the hell they were doing. We're going to be competitive. Okay, we're going to sell, but we're going to be competitive. You should resign because we're going to be competitive, except we're going to sell this guy. And they're bullshitting their fan base too. Well, yeah, now it's We're official. not rebuilding. We're not rebuilding. We're just getting rid of all of our players. We just have- we, For futures. We just have our own fans telling us and our own media telling us um, it's one of the worst forward groups in the league right now. And that's, that's not that's why that doesn't mean that it won't be great. Mm -hmm. Sharon Govich was a great, great trade. Great trade. Well done. You need more than one of those, though, eh? Yeah. And like, I, I hey, that was a great trade. Yeah. You need like uh, lots of them. And they're going to have guys come up like Coronado's a guy and like they're, they're, they've got guys, but like, they need to prove themselves yep. now. All right. We also can't hold Bradshaw Living fault if people don't want to play in a market. If people that's don't yeah. want to, they're like, hey, I don't really like the arena or just the everything that's going on here with the owner. And like, I don't just don't want to play here. I yeah. want to live somewhere else. And Johnny Gaudreau wanted to live somewhere else. And you can't hold the general manager fault for that. Right. And <laughs> and and the, the reason Johnny wanted to play somewhere else is because they played chicken with him all season. They played chicken with him all season. Then they lose him to the Blue Jackets. That and was... then Kachuk's like, you know what? I don't want to be here either now. I, I think it's worth noting that everyone in the hockey world was like the blue jackets uh -huh. well the the flyers should have had them in yeah well, the flyers <laughs> messed up their own cap and couldn't sign Chuck it Chuck fletcher can't count like, <laughs> they literally <laughs> couldn't count the right dollars else they would have had them can't count. Was, you, was you, bad. you didn't get johnny gaudreau because you needed rasmus ristolainen yeah. no or no it was the tony d'angelo yeah and then they For ended five up five million dollars and then they ended up buying him out right yes and he's back in Carolina making a million five, I think. No, it's a UFA right now. It was UFA. Or did he sign the last time? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I don't know. No, no, yeah, he ended up back with the team you got him from that you paid. Not Forget the money. The picks. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Chuck? <laughs> good luck, Chuck, as in good luck if he's your team's friggin' GM. Hey, Hayden. Minnesota Wild fan, how you doing? No. Yeah, producer Hayden is in. Just Maddie. He's a, he's a Minnesota Wild fan. Uh, Tony D'Angelo is still a uh, UFA. Yeah, yeah. You just, somebody else. Don't you love what he left you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Producer, super, super producer Hayden good. is. We should mention uh, producer Maddie is off on a seven week backpacking tour around Europe, as she should. Must be nice. Yeah. Well, you know what? In your early twenties, you need to travel. We keep telling her, like, if you don't do this now, yeah, you get old real quick, <laughs> and then you can't do it anymore. We're old enough that we're always like, Maddie, what fun thing are you doing today? Yeah, tell me. Oh, so I can live vicariously. Oh gosh, that sounds fun. Go yeah. have fun. I, I was looking fun. at her stories yesterday, and she just went into a restaurant because somebody looked nice and she didn't said, it look fun yeah and yeah. she just did it i was like wow imagine yeah that's yeah, crazy but what if they don't have i don't have to check the the the, the menu for chicken fingers or i was you just know? gonna say what if they don't have chicken fingers and then it's a two-hour meltdown <laughs> fuck um uh, there's a couple of things i want to mention here because we do um uh so so kuznetsov it's being reported by frank servali i was a little early on that story and i it was a kind of a learning experience for me because russian media can be extraordinarily unreliable who knew uh <laughs> but frank servali is reporting right now that evgeny kuznetsov will be placed on unconditional waivers today for the purposes of a mutual contract termination so few i oh. skate on that one but let that be a reminder to you. Don't necessarily trust it until, until we hear it from the North American side. Um, he must be getting a ton of money. Well, he had $6 million in real dollars. His cap hit is $7.8 million, but $6 million in real dollars still owed to him. So you have to expect that he's making at least that in Russia. And I think the in thing rubles. is that... Well, aren't rubles like worthless right now? <laughs> they are, but you just pay more. 
Yeah, yeah Noel. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. 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 So the, no, or they'll just pay him in American dollars. They can pay, pay him in American currency. They can do that. Yeah, I mean, it's the KHL. They'll do whatever they yeah. want. I mean, he's, it's they only, usually do. The team he's reportedly signing with is, is the team owned by, as we said, Gazprom, which is the gas giant that sells all their natural gas and all that shit. Or used it's to sell it to you. times 64. A, oh, a dollar shit. to wow, a, a ruble. Wow, it didn't used to be. An, an American yeah. dollar or Canadian? Canadian. Ooh, a Canadian. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, boy. That's uh, that's rough. So, uh, wait, wait, wait till they announce what he's making. I don't think that's crazy. Like if you look at the yen, the yen's like no. I go know. there are things that are like a thousand dollars for an apple. Get, you should go look up the contract Alex Radulov signed uh, when he left for the KHL. It's just a number that like you can't. Oh yeah, he makes like ninety thousand rubles a year. You're like, or no, sorry, ninety million. Yeah, you're just like, sorry. What does that mean? Yeah. What are you What are you talking about? Um. Yeah, Hurricanes just announced it three minutes ago, too. Oh, okay. so it's official. That's a shame. He was I thought he was good for them. Yeah, I think he was, too. And and uh, I I have a question. Who is going to play for the Carolina Hurricanes next year? Why do you ask? Because like they don't have a lot of players. Oh, uh-huh. like and, and Marty Nietzsche is not signed either. Your Radulov thing. Uh, just quick Google search. Uh, Radulov is set to make 300 million rubles per year. <laughs> And what year was that? This is uh, 2012. That's not real. That's not a number. You made that up. Yeah, no, that's not real. You made that up. That was, In 2012, that was around $9.2 million per year. That's where I got the nine from. Yeah, yeah. Yo. <laughs> that's three. <laughs> who the hell? No one was making maybe Ovechkin? 9.2 a year. It would have made him like the second highest paid player in the league. Maybe highest. Oh yeah, he's up there. So anyway, that's why he left. But yeah, that's that's a crazy conversion. Holy shit! And, that, and, and the yen is one hundred and thirteen dollars to one. Love wow. It. So, okay. Yeah. Do that. No, look up some more currency. <laughs> no, <I don't laughs> the that's currency. the it's the currency trading show. That's yeah. what we do here. The kroner's like ten three hundred million rubles per year. <laughs> You're an NBA player now. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what a cartoon! Why did he leave? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh. Uh, something else interesting that's popped up in the last 24 hours is that uh, Tory Krug is uh, potentially looking at missing the entire season. Uh, he has pre-arthritic issues in his um, in his ankle, and they're going to monitor it for the next six to eight weeks. And if he requires surgery, he will miss the entire year. And that is interesting. And I get now why they signed Ryan Suter, because I didn't before. And now that sort of makes a lot of sense because they probably knew this was coming. Yeah, but Ryan well, Sewer's washed. He yeah, is washed. Like that's not <laughs> but so. I feel- but I think so are the Blues, right? Without Tory Krug, especially. Uh, I thought they had a decent offseason. Producer Hayden just was like, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He's quite washed. Um, we now have a Minnesota Wild expert. Um, uh, I saw a lot of this going around. Um, there were There was nothing in the middle. With this Tory Krug news, mm-hmm. there was that's terrible, and I wish him nothing but the best. Mm-hmm. And oh, isn't that convenient? <laughs> what in, in convenient for what? They tried to trade this player, and he blocked it. Yes, they wanted out from under that the contract six, that they actively pursued and chose instead of Alex Petrangelo. Yeah, and there's now a scenario where you get all your money and you don't have to go anywhere. Fourteen million dollars in cap space they have right now. With if crew goes on LTIR, if he goes on LTIR, right? Wow. I don't so think what, they would be announcing this if they weren't pretty sure. What's Doug cooking? I I think Doug Armstrong is not a stupid man. He already tried to get guys like um who was he ended up in New Jersey. Timo Meyer. Uh, he that's he, right. He, this yep. guy sold to the Leafs and then tried to buy at the same deadline. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they're they want a quick turnaround here. Um, this like. I think this is real. Oh, like, yeah. Th- this isn't made up. Like, I, too many people are like, oh, that's made up. When Kucherov was LTIR'd by the Lightning, he was hurt. When Stone... He just, he just happened to come back a few weeks after he was healthy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think they waited. Yeah, I'm They sorry. waited. Like, delay your health a week. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they waited. You know what? I could be even healthier. Yeah. Um, with uh, Mark Stone, every time... He's been hurt. I don't. I've lost track. But every time the Golden Knights of LTI him, it's been with a legitimate injury. Mm-hmm. The the 
the easy comparable or uh, maybe not easy. The, the one that you think of, or I can't help but think of Marion Hosa. He, he was dealing with an issue that made him allergic to his equipment yeah. or something for years. And he retired when his contract was designed to, when it was designed for him to retire. Yeah, that injury becomes, ah, I can't deal with it anymore when you feel like retiring. Yeah, yeah. Hockey players play through heinous shit mm -hmm. for like the vast majority of their career. And uh, there are probably any number of stars in the league who could shut it down for like several years, if not retire right now if they had to i look at patrick kane when he sat out with his hip for so long mm -hmm. i'm sure if patrick kane could wanted to play just push it a little bit more he probably could have yeah and he, not had like the full surgery and no, sit yeah. out all that time if he was like if they were on the if he was with the blackhawks at the end and they were on the verge of a cup and he's like oh you know what if i push it for five more months i could win another cup or something like that i'm sure he could do that but it was at the time of his career where he's like oh no this injury i've been dealing with for a while i'm gonna sit out Shea Weber and Carey Price were two of the most mm -hmm. important components of the 2021 Montreal Canadiens going to the Stanley Cup final and never played a hockey game again. Shea, uh, uh, Price played a couple. Nick Kiprios was right just early on Shea yeah, Weber. He was a yes, year early. He, he knew what, that Shea Weber was dealing with this and he was like, oh, Shea Weber may never play again. But Shea Weber just pushed through because Montreal needed him and they, he wanted to play. And then the, the injury was always there. It never went away or was never non-existent to a much lesser extent yanni hockenpah with the leafs they still have not officially announced that signing he may never play again he may play another 500 games yep um these guys play through heinous shit all the time so krug i think if he was in a situation that both parties were content with might play this year uh but i don't think that's the case but it's and also, he's also taking care of his health. Yeah, yes. and it also hasn't been announced either way. It was no, it, no. he's been diagnosed with the pre arthritic, uh, it, whatever the, in his ankle. Yeah, and they're going to reevaluate in six to eight weeks. Like that was the announcement. Yes. It wasn't that he's going to miss it; it's that he might. But right. they're going to reevaluate. Which weeks. means we don't find out till a couple weeks, I think, into training camp. Mm -hmm. And and that I think presents a really unique opportunity for the Blues because if they're looking at this season as Okay, we're going to do the best that we possibly can, mm -hmm. but this is really and truly a a build year, mm -hmm. right? If we squeak in, great, but we're this is a build year for us. Um, they can, if I'm, I'm looking at their their cap friendly or cap friendly, oh my god, Puckpedia, um, and I'm looking at where they're at. So they've got you know they got two more years after this coming one of Bennington. Um, they've got uh, you know they've got Falk for three more years, Krug, Pareko for four. Nick Letty, their defense is looking old. You could potentially take back some some bad salary. You could take some like expiring deals. You could farm some draft picks and not necessarily use those draft picks mm -hmm. to draft. You can use those draft picks to get players. And they could be buyers at the trade deadline. Doug Armstrong's a very creative general manager. He's one of those guys that like of all the GMs are like, well, if I do something, I might make a mistake. So better not. Doug Armstrong's not that guy. And he's also built up enough currency with the ownership in, in St. Louis that I think that he can do things that other general managers just cannot do. Mm -hmm. And I am very interested to see how he augments Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas, and I guess to a lesser extent, you know, uh, 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 Pavel Buchnevich, who's 29. Like he's got to build around these guys now. And I'm I think the Blues are going to be a story this year. Watch me work. Watch me work, Adam. Do GMs make all the phone calls? No. Agents do. Agents, well, and assistant general managers. Yeah. So who was Kyle Dubas's most common trading partner when he was with the Leafs? I'm pretty sure if it wasn't Chicago, it was St. Louis. It was the St. Louis Blues. Wow, interesting. Who's the head coach of the Leafs? Uh, Craig Brube, chief. So what do you what do you say? I'm um, saying so maybe there's they're gonna uh, trade Craig Berube maybe, to the maybe, Penguins. <laughs> maybe stop flirting and kiss <laughs> with what? <laughs> but but what deal? What do you say? But Tree doesn't. I don't know if Tree trades with the Blues a lot. What what move are you saying? I don't know. Is there a move that a lot of Leaf fans are talking about? Uh, there. I know there's Martin a writer going to the Blues. I know there's a. I know the Leafs Nation <laughs> blog really likes Alexi Toropchenko. 
Uh, I don't know we're going to move on from the ridiculous assessment. Of no, no, no. He's, 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 I'm he's, trying to add to it. Okay. Trying to put fuel in there. Okay. Uh, Turupchenko is 25. He's a right winger. Uh, he's also six foot six every single day when he wakes up. That's crazy. Who else on the Leafs plays right wing? Stop it. What? <laughs> Stop. What? I don't like what you guys are doing. What do you mean? What am I doing? You guys are putting words in my mouth. <laughs> I don't like what you're doing. Uh, I'm trying to propose a Cali Yarn Croak deal, and you guys are making it into something. Also, There's Adam said the Blues are going to be good this year. I No, I don't think they are. I think it's oh. a build year. Competitive. Oh, okay. I think they'll be competitive enough, but I don't think they're good. Oh, okay. like, I, don't, I don't think. And I also think they're in a division that's too hard. Like, I don't know if Minnesota, Minnesota's got to be a fringe playoff team. St. Louis got to be a fringe playoff. Like, they're one of those teams where if everything goes right, then maybe. Yeah. Right? Goaltending helps. Bennington needs to find his form. This would be the year to find it because he's going to get a lot of shots. Um, uh, and uh, the last thing I want to do before we get to the uh, press conference quickly here is, Jesse, I just sent you one picture that just uh, came up. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt weird looking at Play the, the video. You want to play the video? All right. Hey, I didn't bring this up. Oh God! Oh. Isn't this weird? And I grew up in Nashville. I, I grew up just like 20 minutes down the street from Broadway, and it's like that's just. So I thought Stamkos was talking for a second. Really I'm like, no, you didn't. Dude, good. My name's Alex. For anybody listening, this is Steven Stamkos walking along Broadway in his new Predators jersey. It looks weird. Is he gonna sing? He just hopped on stage with a band that's playing on the street, and he gave him a tip. Oh, he gave him a tip. Oh, that's cute. I was taking a picture. Smile big, Steve. Look I know you're hot Steven. as hell in that jersey. We've been to Nashville twice now. Broadway's so much fun. Oh, yeah. It's, but it, the locals always say, like, they never go down there because we're, we're, wait, we're wait. chatting with Eric Young. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, the only suburbs. pay to wait. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I never go down to Broadway. And we're like, we're such tourists. <laughs> we are, but you know what? It, like, I've been, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to travel for work a lot. And, you know, I lived in Nova Scotia. So like Halifax, if I wasn't living in Toronto, Halifax will always be my number one city. Always. But I think if I were going to live anywhere in the States, Nashville's like number one. Okay. I think that's like, and, and I just love the vibe there. I love it there. You know what's so friggin' weird? Seeing Stamkos walk around in the jersey didn't look weird to me. Because their jersey is so damn sexy. It's like, a sexy jersey. It's Look a, at how hot he is. I love this jersey. Seeing him in the equipment in the helmet. <laughs> well, you're not Ron. What the? Yeah, no, that's very weird. It's very uh, NHL fantasy draft. Like you you drafted your own team. Mm -hmm. I can see the octagon shaped light in his visor. There you go. That is We're like, also wow. getting a peek at the Fanatics jerseys for the first time. They look good. Uh, they had the Fanatics logo on the back crest. And when he was walking around, you could see it. So it's the first ever time Fanatics logo is on an official uh, North American pro sports team as the official on ice jersey of the one of the four majors. So it's pretty cool. We're seeing that. It looks decent. No real changes from last year. Mm -hmm. um, don't see any big problems. They're not really see-through like the MLB jerseys <laughs> that Nike made with Fanatics. So no problems right now. Keep well, an eye on those, though. It's also like a really bad leak because like, did, is it public knowledge? Stamco signed with the Preds? Yeah, it is. It oh, is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, let's do the press conference. The presser I'm just in a silly goose. You are in a silly goose right now. The Steve Dangle press conference. <laughs> Um, what are your thoughts on the Shane Pinto news that dropped today? Because he was on a podcast, Steve, this podcast you're a big fan of. Empty Netters. Empty Netters. And he revealed that he confirmed the rumors that were kind of out there and in, in circles on the Reddits and in conversations with the gossips that he was suspended for 41 games last season because he had a friend in the U.S. place bets on his account. His uh, I, I don't know if they revealed what betting service it was, but whatever betting app he was on, his friend was using it in the States while Shane Pinto was in Canada. So they knew it wasn't him using it. Uh, That's how the, 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 like, the bets were coming from the States. So they knew Shane Pinto wasn't betting on the games himself. It was mm -hmm. his friend who's using his account in the States. What do you guys think about that? The reveal and the confirmation of why the suspension happened. I mean, people make mistakes, so that's a pretty dumb one. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, how old Shane Pinto? Like 25? 
Uh, no, I think he's even younger than that. Yeah. Like, so like, like that sounds like a early twenties dumb. Twenty three. Yeah. Twenty four in November. Okay. So you're 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 you made a dumbass mistake and you learned. And and <laughs> here's the thing. He, like, he learned to the tune of six figures. Yep. Oh yeah. It cost him a million dollars. Plus the minimum. contract, like he probably would have got if he wasn't. No, no probably question. seven figures then. No yeah. question. No question. And 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 I want to say this. Shane Pinto is going to be a great player. Um, we sort of had we sort of kind of thought that that was what it was like from, from what we had heard and stuff, but you can't report this stuff unless you know, and you, if you don't know, you don't, you can't report it. But the, the thing that I, I have to say, I have to give the NHL a lot of credit here is, um, they need to protect the game itself. They need to, if somebody is gambling improperly, whether they're doing it themselves or it's in the Shane Pinto case where it's a proxy. And, and I don't even think that like that person wasn't placing bets on Shane's behalf. They were just using his account or, or whatever. Dante Porter. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it was, they have to go absolutely overboard bonkers with it. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think obviously gambling and sports have existed for five, six, 10,000 years. It's always happened. Uh, it's quite it's, the leap. it's just, well, it, it has. I mean, it's, it, it existed in Rome when they used to race chariots. Um, but, I love Adam. but the point, the point here is that it's legalized so that it can be decriminalized so that there's no criminal element mm -hmm. and there's tax, tax benefits to this, to the state, whatever jurisdiction you're in. And I look at this and I think, uh, Shane Pinto is going to serve, unfortunately for Shane, as an example for a bunch of guys who, could have made worse decisions. I'm glad it was only this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time everybody move on. And maybe we could stop making the Shane Pinto gambling jokes too. Cause like he No, nah, no one's ever gonna stop that. I think we could chill on the Shane. So we I mean, jokes. people don't forget. Like people he's he's in of... his early twenties. Like I I don't know. This is this is a victimless crime. So can we just like he served his time, let's move on. That's my point. Uh this I mean, you still see like people make Ryan O'Reilly drive through jokes. Yeah, yeah. I people it. don't forget, man. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. People don't Jeez, forget. You're right. I, I just forgot they about do. you. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. <laughs> they do. They do all the time. People don't forget. Yeah. So anyway, oh I just I, I look at it and I like, you know, OK, the NHL did the right thing. And uh, people were at the time when they did not know what happened. Well, he should be banned forever. Well, no. You don't know. You got to wait until the facts come out. Now, and it's and it's <laughs> like something that we talked about last show. It's difficult. They intentionally make it difficult for you to have uh, like a hard opinion on it because they're vague with the details. And they they have to be in this case because they settled. Yeah. You have to remember, this was a legal settlement. Mm -hmm. This was not the NHL just handing down a punishment. They went to Shane's people and said, this and then Shane's people came back and there were NDA signed and I think there was an ex expiration of that NDA and obviously he's on the empty netters talking about it so the NDA expired the the National Hockey League did not want this story happening during the season he uh I, I keep bringing this book up but um it has to do with uh the Department of Player Safety or, or not, not not uh uh supplemental discipline has to do with supplemental discipline the but Burke's Law you have to download the audiobook because then you can hear him he say it. Hear Brian Burke say the following sentence. Listen here, you dumb fucker. <laughs> 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 because there was there was a player on the Sharks. I think it was on the Sharks who he assaulted a ref on the ice and he did it twice. I think I think it was he knocked him to the ground or knocked him to the ice and slashed him. Also, the ref didn't want to make a big deal of it. Um, but it was supposed to be something like 10 games if you assault a ref, but if you do it twice, he's like, it should be 20 mm -hmm. or it was 20 and it should have been 40, whatever it was, it should have been double. And because the ref didn't make a big deal of it. Um, and there, I think there might've been a lack of footage. Uh, he only got the suspension for one of the two incidents. And so Burke basically said, listen here, you dumb fucker. Like, I'm giving you this and you're not going to give me any shit about it because I should be giving you double. And the player just went, thank you, Mr. Burke. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, other questions? This comes from our Discord server. Go to sdpn.ca or just hit the link in the description right now to join us on our Discord server. Ktown2272 points us to this Reddit thread from our hockey, and it says, who will be awarded the 2020 Stanley Cup after the NHL is locked out for the season? And this Reddit thread what? is about the time this person learned, this was posted eight days ago, that a beer league 
team sued for the right for non-NHL teams to be eligible to win the Stanley Cup, and they won. So it is a little known fact that if a... If the NHL Board of Governors who are in charge of the Stanley Cup do not hold a competition to award the Stanley Cup, it shall be awarded to any team that competes for it. No. And they will be the Stanley Cup champion. So I'll read that. It's a long thread on on Reddit. So I'm just going to read this last part about the settlement. So this happened around the 0506 lockout. 0405. Where, sorry. Uh, yes, 0405 lockout. And they they took it to court, and the settlement is protected by a confidentiality agreement, but the key part is public info. The NHL conceded that the current agreement between the trustees and the NHL shall be amended to acknowledge that nothing therein precludes the trustees from exercising their power to award the Stanley Cup to a non-NHL team in any year in which the NHL fails to organize a competition to determine a Stanley Cup winner. Wow. The Canadian legal system has established that if the NHL has a lockout year where they cannot organize a competition to determine the Stanley Cup, uh, the winner of the Stanley Cup, the trustees may exercise their power and award to the champion of whatever league they see fit. Never knew this, and when I found out, I had a little giggle. The NHL has another full season lockout, and some beer league ends up getting their name on the cup. That might be the best Stanley Cup final ever. It'd be incredible. So <laughs> they would have to be televised. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. this would be international news. I'm <laughs> stuck between what a bunch of absolute legends <laughs> and the Oscar for most bored person in 2004 goes to. So it goes back to <laughs> like, like the the uh, the 1919 season when the Spanish flu like canceled the season and in 1947 there was other things that happened but it goes back to way back when the original Stanley Cup existed there was weird rules that they had to it the board of trustees have to award this cup and it's still kind of valid today I I don't (laughs) I love old laws (laughs) I love old laws if you go and look at the Stanley Cup there's a big ugly uh, was not awarded blank space Mm -hmm. yeah like was not awarded honestly the cup has that cars. like hurts Alan's heart. Oh yeah, like, when no, he talks about it on Asian provocateur, it looks hideous. Yeah, they if should you go put, and look at the cup. It looks hideous. They yeah. should put uh, 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 just somebody should tap in in the in the in that spot. Just a picture of Gary Bettman holding it above his head. <laughs> uh, it's it's it isn't it's it's so embarrassing mm-hmm. that that's the case. By the way, I love old laws like that because there are like so I I don't know if you guys watch Welcome to Wrexham. Uh, no, uh, I've seen literally. So, so I, I like that show because it's great when you're folding laundry and it makes you feel good and they tell great <laughs> stories. And and it's like it's a real like come from behind story. And uh, one of the things that they have to deal with when they're renovating this soccer pitch called the race course, which used to be a literally a horse racing track. Yeah. Uh, it's like 120, 130 years old. And there are laws around it that govern it that go back centuries Mm -hmm. so they're going back into these old books and like trying to run it through this council or that council or whatever now it sounds like a gigantic pain in the ass and it is but (laughs) because british law is a gigantic pain in the ass when you've got laws that are that old but it's so it's fascinating how we used to do things and how some of those things stick around for years decades and decades and decades and then you forget about it and then some smart ass is like, you know what? <laughs> you know I what? want the cup. <laughs> I am so bored. I love that. And I love it, like, that. Keep, that was before podcasts were big. Oh, yeah. That Nowadays, guy, that person would just listen to a, a show on their phone. He'd be, well, and I think that guy <laughs> would be like, he'd be viral like the way Dark Guy went viral. The way what, Tony X went viral. What up, you know? counsel? I'm suing to win the Stanley Cup. How sick is that? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, I love that. I love that. Anything else, Jess? Yeah, we had a question here for Steven. Oh, this is from Ferda Ducks. <laughs> the AHL is also from our Discord. The AHL recently announced the 24 25 schedule, and the Marlies will be playing a rare cross conference series against the Gulls this year, <gasps> including back to back games in San Diego, January 29th and 31st. Will Steve's dream of a San Diego vacation finally come true? I hope so. Are you taking us to San Diego finally? I think it'd be fun if we went to go see the Marlies play the Gulls. Go to San Diego. End of January. Yeah. (laughs) I want to see the Marlies play the Gulls. Especially because like it wouldn't just be like for a game. We could watch the two game series. Oh, that would be sick. sick. And we and also we have to do soccer rules. Then whoever wins on aggregate. 
you know, <laughs> that's how they should count it for sure. And By they should way, go to penalty kicks. So, so do we know if it's a weekday or a weekend? Do we know? Uh, we can just look at a calendar. All right. How about that? Let's look at a calendar. That's cra- uh, crazy. January, I'll go to San Diego in January. Calendar. To watch hockey. Uh, Jan- what do we do in San Diego? Uh, it's a Wednesday Whenever and we Friday. Want. Well, we have to do the STPs live down there, wouldn't we? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> now, the oh, problem Wednesday is airfare. And hotel slash Airbnb. No, we're, the we're, gulls will pick that up. Think, oh, yeah. You think the gulls are yeah. listening? We'll, we'll get a charter on the Marley's plane. And then the gulls yes. will pick up our hotel and our tickets. If there's anything I know about MLSE, it's they like to spend money on people that don't work for them. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and are so complimentary of their president. Yeah. <laughs> and board. <laughs> and the guy who just got there just got there and is under no obligation to do anything. No. Or oh, he I can just make a big old splash <laughs> like a gull going after a fish. No, no. On, he Keith. just got there. Come on, Keith. No, he just Mr. got there. Pally, we used to work for you. All of us. Come on. You got my emails every morning and deleted them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we used to get, by the way, I, I can tell the story now because I don't work for that company. Neither does he. But there were when when the executives would send out emails, they would have their faces on the top of the email. Now, they've since discontinued that because especially in media, there's been nothing but bad news. But back then there was some good news and some bad news. Right. And we could always tell what it, whether it was good news or bad news based on Keith's picture. So we used to have happy Keith emails. No, you're joking. And he'd be like, we just announced the NHL deal. And then there'd be solemn Keith or sad Keith emails where he'd be like, that's and- just emojis <laughs> with your face. <laughs> and it would be like, well, we're cutting back here. <laughs> That's a that is a real thing. It happened at Rogers. Yeah, yeah. It was, that was before they really understood the internet. You know, so you could you wouldn't even have to read the title. You just scroll down and look at the picture at the top. You don't need that. Isn't that funny? Your picture doesn't need to be on the email. Well, I think that they've realized that and they've pulled. It off. <laughs> oh my god! Going back to being nameless and faceless. I think the point was to be uh, a little bit more humane with the with uh, you know us plebs, but uh, they weren't really that. Yeah, how'd they go? Yeah. Anyway, let's wrap it up there, shall we? One one last thing. One last thing. Okay. Um, this was brought to our attention by Fran.mo. It was, what are your thoughts on Connor McDavid being 98 on ESPN's top 100 athletes of the 21st century? So ESPN's doing this list where they're counting down the top 100 athletes of the 21st century. I believe they are only at so 20... since 2000? Yeah. They are only at 26 right now. They got to Peyton Manning at 26. Okay. And coming in... At number 98 is Connor McDavid. We could do a whole show on this. So we could do this on the VIP if we want. Yeah, initial thoughts like on Connor McDavid 98 and uh, the rest of the list. Is he the only hockey player? No, no, no. There'll be other hockey No, Gretzky will be on there. Lemieux will be on there. No, Gretzky won't. Here, can you put it? Because Gretzky retired before the Oh, oh, yeah. I think Crosby will be on there. Oh, sorry. Aiden? Go ahead. Hayden, Mike. Pat McAfee went nuts. He works for ESPN and yeah. he tore the ESPN thing to shreds on his show. Well, good. Oh. But, you know, that it's again, it's not ESPN's fault. It's the NHL's fault. The NHL is is for, <laughs> it's the NHL's fault no, for no, being stay a stay with them. No what? <laughs> for being completely irrelevant and being off of networks like ESPN in the States for 20 years, right? Connor McDavid is much, much higher than that. We all know that. Uh, and there are some amazing names on this. I don't know. I don't know. Is he? I think he is. Have you this passed pretty another hockey player? No, he. I think he might be the only hockey player. Adam, cannot be the yeah, only Yeah, when you player. said, is he the only hockey player? And I was like, Crosby's no, got to be in the top 10. Jesse. And I was like, no, but wait a second. So, this is the 21st century. McDavid is 98. Do me a favor and go look at 97. Uh, nine, well, scroll, 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 scroll. Go look at 97. Go. 97 and this is, this is how far down ESPN I don't know how to pronounce this cricket player's name Virat Koshi I don't, don't, oh, don't want to butcher it so there you Holy. go yeah now listen cricket is way bigger than hockey way oh, bigger. I know yeah but it's not about bigger it's not about the popularity of the sport that's my thing about it's not the NHL's fault it's about the individual athlete and how good they are and how great they are so the, he's the, the only the hockey player so far from from 100 to 26 Yes, that's that's an indictment from on the ninety NHL, from ninety seven to twenty six. Indictment yeah. on the NHL or no one? Yeah, no, you got it right. Yeah, the, hockey is such an unbelievable game when you when you really break it down. And I'm sorry, like, the fact that he's at ninety eight, they're like, oh uh, fuck, and they just threw him in. Like he's one of the only people on that list who doesn't get to walk or run. No, but like <laughs> Connor McDavid's not better than Roy Halladay. 
Okay, what and where's Roy? Well, Roy 88. Holy shit. Really? I think if I think if Connor McDavid won a championship this spring, he's probably higher on that list. Did that happen? Nope. <laughs> nope. It didn't. It didn't. Is, but is Connor McDavid better than Venus Williams? Is he better than Kawhi Leonard? Is he better than Chris Paul? Oh, Chris I think Paul. I think as long yeah, as there, there he <laughs> is. Oh, oh, I got it. I got a little crack in Connor the armor. David is better than Chris Paul. A hundred percent. I also want to say Chris that Chris Paul ever the best player in the NBA. No, there not even go. close. Chris Paul shouldn't like Chris Paul's done a lot of great things for the NBA. He's been a great player. I don't think Chris Paul should be on that list. But McDavid, Kawhi is best lower player. than Chris Paul. Like Kawhi. What? Yeah. Kawhi at one point was the best player in the NBA. He was. Jordan, George St. Pierre has never been the best player. George St. Pierre is 76. I can see that. Which is right around, but like Mookie Betts is 73. So, oh, no. Mookie Betts has won a couple. Uh, he's, he's also won MVP. Two he's also series. been the best player. Yeah, no. So, Mookie Betts is fine. Here's my problem uh, McDavid's been year in, year out, the best player in the NHL for at least half a decade. Yeah. Probably longer. 98 is ridiculous. Yeah, so like all the players that you mentioned, like Venus Williams is bloody incredible. She's not even the best Williams sister. Right. <laughs> like, like keep going. Uh, I, 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 I would have I would have Connor McDavid above James Harden. James Harden's 67. Like I oh Connor McDavid could James easily 67. be in the top 50 if we're going by these names. Shohei Otani's at 62. Hasn't oh, that's won. crazy. No, no way, hasn't won shit. No, though. but that's yeah. that's that's not his fault. Yeah, but Mike the, the, Mike Trout is like is in the thirties. McDavid's fault. Mike Trout's in the thirties. He hasn't won shit. No, yeah, no, but Shohei Otani played on one of the worst. Like the Angels' run is historically it's bad. T- it's so bad. Yeah, he is uh, the reincarnated of Babe Ruth. Remember when I we think. were like, this could be a VIP episode? And yeah, we just did. No, it. this is amazing. We'll keep going to this because we're coming back to this for VIP. Uh, Ovechkin, Ovechkin's at fifty four. Oh, there you go. So we scrolled. Uh, we didn't find Ovechkin. Let me see if I can find Crosby and then we'll end it. Steve Nash is 51. Imagine um, Crosby's you can pull this up, Aiden. Imagine Crosby's not. So I'm just scrolling through it. Let me see if you guys see Crosby, too. No, so, I don't think he's on there yet. I, he's not, not yet. He, Ovi and Crosby need to be in the top 20. Okay. okay. So How's that? Crosby has to be better than Kevin Durant and Barry Bonds. I think but that's fair. Barry, Barry Bonds, Bonds also. Barry Bonds is the greatest baseball player ever. No, he no, also, no, no, He also, what, he also pumped a bunch I, of steroids. And I agree with you, Jesse, <laughs> but he also did pump a bunch of steroids. We do need to mention that. Oh, but it's also since 2000? Yes. yes. Which matters. Yeah, yeah. No, and by the way, I keep forgetting that. Barry, Barry's best years pre-steroid were pre-2000, were they not? Yes. And he, to me, Pirates Barry Bonds is why he should be on that list. Not home runs Barry Bonds. Pirates Barry Bonds when he was going 40 40, oh. 40 stolen bases and like 40 home runs. That guy's monster. The, uh, He's the, a monster. The 73 season happened in 01, so that would have been within this range. Okay. So that's. Yeah. Huh? But um, I don't know. Barry Bonds. A Next question, because it was stupid. Uh, Kershaw, Trout's at 30, as Steve mentioned. Schumacher being there. What do you think there? of that, yes, Adam? Absolutely. Michael Schumacher's the guy 29. won like five, five or six in a Should row. Should he be higher? Yeah. I, I, I think so. I mean, okay, listen. I know Formula One's a very specialized sport, yeah. Uh, and there are only twenty drivers, but this guy won four or five in a row. He won seven because he won a couple with Benetton, but he won four or five in a row to start the century. And it would be like I think Verstappen's got to be on this list too, and so does Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton, won. I haven't seen Verstappen. Would we would have already seen him, right? You think so? Because he would have. He would have. Lu- if you're putting Schumacher, then I, Lewis I assume be higher. Lewis hasn't come up yet. I hope so. Yeah, I assume he's in within the top Lewis 20. Is a god in that sport. Uh, I think this is a prisner of the moment. They have Nikola Jokic at 28. Yeah, no. Um, ah, that's not yet. That's back a little to back much. MVPs in a championship. 28 it's given who's behind him yeah. though is very high. Yeah, that's a little I don't see now I'm like Connor McDavid couldn't crack this tier. Prisoner of the moment. What a great phrase. Thank you. I like that. Um Connor McDavid couldn't crack Schumacher, couldn't ca- uh, crack Jokic. I, no, I, get I that. agree with that. I agree. Connor McDavid should be like 50. Yeah. 98 is ridiculous. I think that's what we're saying. And by the way, this is not based here. on talent. This is also based on accomplishment. Greatness right? is yeah. their list. Peyton Manning finishes out at 26. When the list is completed, we'll do like half an hour of VIP. I can't wait. There by the way, it is. Eli it had two championships, so he must be higher than Peyton. Yes. No. <laughs> no. He had that big throw when the guy caught it with his head. He beat the unbeaten Patriots. Yeah. Peyton also has two uh, Super Bowls. So. Does he? Yeah. Oh, he won with Denver. Yeah, Denver and, and uh, right. in Indy. Right. Sorry, Subwoofer guy. I just smacked the tape. All right. What is it? Uh, What are you looking at? Follow. (laughs) Everyone follow Brad Elliott Schlossman on Twitter. He is dropping an expose on Major League Hockey. So it does exist. 
Maybe. Uh, not really. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.